Good to see everyone. We're going to do a 60 second, and I mean a 60 second recap. So, in the garden, Adam was presented with a test. Uh, and uh, what was the test, or what was the command God gave? It was, uh, here's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat from it. Uh, and if he obeyed, what would have happened? Uh, so he was only in rule uh, over Eden uh, in the garden, so only a portion of the land. What was the goal? The goal was to rule over all the earth. And so if he obeyed, he would have got that. Uh, he would have received rule over all creation, eternal life, glory. But what if he disobeyed? What if he disobeyed God's command and ate of the tree? Uh, it would have been the opposite. It would have been death. You shall surely die. Uh, and would this have just affected Adam, uh, this command? No, this would have affected all his posterity, all future generations that would have come from him. So the whole human race is the first man who would have affected the whole human race. And what is this setup called? You can shout out. This is called a covenant. Well done, well done. Um, and in this covenant, there was a condition, uh, and Adam had to obey it. So uh, all this was dependent on his works, his work of obedience. And so this is called the covenant of works. And if you forget what covenant is, uh, what, it, what it means, uh, there's another word. Covenant means contract. Well done, Peter. Peter was listening. Very good, very good. So God has dealt with humanity, uh, not vaguely, not in kind of a loose, general, let's see what's going to happen type of relationship. No, God is dealing with humanity in a covenant, in a contract. And so Adam was a giant, uh, and around his belt were billions of hooks with billions of people hanging from those hooks. So if Adam stands, everyone stands. Adam falls, everyone falls. And so we have our memory verse uh, that sums that up. Romans 5.18, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. So that's the 62-minute recap. Now, with this test set before Adam, we know what happens next, don't we? We know that this giant fell. So by his disobedience, the many were made sinners, as Paul says. He chose the option of, you shall surely die. And today, we're going to see what you shall surely die means. But we're going to see what, what the curse of breaking this covenant is. And we're going to see how, break, how the covenant of works explains why the world is the way that it is. In fact, the covenant of works, it's the only explanation for why the world is the way that it is. Uh, and to see why, let's turn to Genesis 3 and the fall. So let's turn to Genesis 3, it's on page 2 of your Bibles. Genesis 3. And we're going to focus on uh, Genesis 3 today. Uh, and it's um, um, important to unpack this chapter. Because remember, whatever happens to Adam happens to us. So if you zoom in on Adam and zoom in what he is like, you're going to see what we, humanity, are like. And so, if we zoom in on Genesis 3 and see what happens in Eden, then you're going to see what happens to the whole world. So, uh, you can think of it like this. Uh, imagine a river, and at the source of that river up high, uh, uh, it's contaminated and polluted and deadly. Uh, and then what happens at the the rest of the river, downstream, everything else is polluted and contaminated because the source is. And so what happened with Adam now contaminates the whole world, the whole human race. And so let's go to the source where it all began, where the pollution started. And we're going to read Genesis 3. We're going to read the whole chapter. I think it's going to be really helpful to do that. So Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. 
But the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God, uh, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave me, to, uh, whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Between your offspring and her offspring, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life, thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife, wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. This is the word of God. Uh, So let's remind ourselves what humanity was meant to be like. Uh, So God made a covenant with man. Uh, Man was made in the image of God, meant to reflect God in his heart and in all his life. Uh, And man was meant to be united together. So it wasn't going to be just Adam on the earth. It was going to be all humanity united together, reflecting God in fellowship with one another, in fellowship with God, ruling over creation and ultimately ruling over the, the whole earth in glory. But in Genesis 3, we see how Adam spoiled this beautiful design. And we see how the world has now been contaminated from this one event. And so let's zoom in on Genesis 3 and see what happened to the world. Uh, So just uh, focus on verses 4 to 6 in a moment. Uh, Just look how the serpent frames the opportunity to eat of the fruit. Uh, So verse 4, but the serpent said to the woman... You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. Here, in this moment, we see the very nature of sin. So when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, it wasn't a cheeky, oh, this is just a little thing, let's just break the rules a little bit. Uh, It it wasn't, oh, let's just have a bit of fun here. No, uh, what is in front of them, uh, uh, this tree in front of them, is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent says, look at the fruit. If you eat this, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So they saw the fruit and they thought, huh, I could be like God here. I could be wise without needing God. 
Uh, I, could, I could make up good and evil for myself. Uh, I, I could tell myself how this world works. And so when Adam ate of the fruit, that's what he was seeking. Uh, there was a desire in his heart to be like God. And so when he ate the fruit, this wasn't a little slip up that had disproportionate big consequences. No, the act of eating the fruit, it was a small act visually, but actually this sin was an attempt to take the God of the universe off his throne and it was Adam trying to place himself on the throne instead. And that is what sin is. It's a desire in our hearts to be our own gods. It's to reject the creator and make ourselves the center of the universe. It, it's the desire in our hearts to say, this world isn't God's kingdom. This is my kingdom. I'm the king or the queen of my life. And so as we see this moment in Eden, we see something has changed in the human heart. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. Something has changed here. There is now a desire to oppose God's. And actually, from here on in, everything begins to change. The perfection of Eden and this glorious, beautiful design, it all changes. The breaking of the covenant, it has drastic consequences. And so, like a river, the curses begin to flow down to all the world. And I want us to investigate what exactly has changed. So uh, I want us to break out into groups. You can break out into groups of a few people uh, and look up these verses uh, in the box in uh, the box on your sheet. And I want you to try and find out what has changed uh, and so what has flowed down from Adam to the world. Uh, so there are verses to look up uh, and uh, questions to answer. Uh, try to mix up. Don't, all, don't everyone start at question one. Try to mix it up. Go on. Uh, I'll give you uh, five minutes to have a chat.
Another minute on that. Okay, try and uh, wrap it up there. A bit long. Yeah, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Cool, cool. Okay. So, what did everyone? Uh, what did people come up with for the first question? What has changed between us and God? Go on, hands up or shout out. Relationship. Yeah, a relationship with God. What? what what's? Uh, it, how has it changed? In what way? Yeah. Grief, uh-huh. Yeah, the, the, we're starting to see a need for Jesus now. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good point. Uh, what, what's happened between us and God? We're hiding. We're hiding. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting thing to see, isn't it? Uh, something's changed. We're we're not wanting to be in God's presence anymore. There's there's a sense of a guilt and shame inside of us, and so so God isn't someone we're wanting to run to. We're, we're wanting to hide from. Uh, and what about in verse 24? What do people see in that? So what happens to Adam? Yeah. So, so we don't want to be uh, near God. We want to hide from him. And God says, you're guilty. You can't be in my presence. Remember, the garden is where God walked. That that's his presence. And he says, you can't be in my presence anymore. That sinners cannot be in the presence of God. And what's changed in our bodies? Are we, are we the same? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. P- pain is now introduced into God's design. It, it's not going to function properly. So th- there's, a, there's been a, a fracturing with God. There's been a fracturing in our bodies. Um, pain wasn't a reality before this point. Uh, Adam and Eve wouldn't have hurt before this. Uh, so uh, as we see the relationship between God and man, we see that there's been a spiritual death inside man and we see in our bodies that there's pain but but where does the pain lead to where does adam have to return to dust there's going to be physical death now Uh, and how about what what has changed to our destinies as we look back to verse 24 so the destiny before it was to rule over all creation uh, and they would have reached the tree of life to get that but 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 what now they're blocked they're blocked from the tree of life their destiny can no longer be glory they're shut out from glory there's uh, there's eternal death now Uh, and what's changed in the human relationships i'll i'll I'll, I'll quickly go through these Uh, it's interesting to see see what uh, how adam responds to the question uh, from god's did you eat of the tree? Adam says, no, 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 the, the woman gave me the fruit. So Adam, when Eve was created, he, he gave a, an amazing poem, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. I love this woman with all my heart. And now how does he respond? Throws her under the bus, doesn't he? No, the woman did it. Blame the woman. And so we see a fracturing in humanity. And we see that in marriage as well, in the curse. Um, the, the woman, in some way... 
her desire is going to be, it says for the man, it, it can't be a positive for it. There's got to be uh, some sort of fracturing there. And, and the man is going to be uh, dominating over his wife. Uh, and what's changed in the world? It, the thorns and thistles now, work will be hard. There's, there's a fracturing in the world. Uh, the world, before this point in Eden, it wouldn't have had wildfires and floods to wipe out cities and tornadoes. But there is now a curse in the actual fabric of reality in the universe. And what's changed in our minds and our moral compass? Well, well look what they wanted uh, to get from the tree of the knowledge of the evil. That, that humanity thinks they're wise uh, in our own sight. We think we can determine good and evil without God. And so let's just tie all this together. When God said, you shall surely die, it actually means death on uh, many levels. Physical death in our bodies, spiritual death in our hearts, and eternal death uh, in the life to come. And so this death, physical, spiritual, and eternal, this now hangs over humanity's head. This is why the world is the way that it is around us. So in sum, Adam sinned and he brought sin into the world. And this, all around us, this is the curse of the covenant of works. Uh, and this is precisely what Paul says in Romans 5.12. And I've written it down there for you, or you can flick to Romans 5 if you like. Uh, so therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin... Creation, the world and humanity, it's the way that it is because of how Adam broke the covenant of works. And so Paul, the Apostle Paul, he's been, been reading his Westminster Confession of Faith. So uh, turn to verse, uh, to verse, to page 19. Well, the Westminster Confession of Faith is broken into chapters, just explaining different topics of the Bible. Um, and so this isn't an authority equal with the Bible. This is just trying to, to explain what the Bible teaches. And so chapter sin, 6 is all about sin. Uh, so let me read the first article. Our first parents, being seduced by the subtlety and temptation of Satan, sinned in eating the forbidden fruit. This their sin God was pleased, according to his wise and holy counsel, to, to permit, having purposed to order it to his own glory. And then article 2, by this sin... They fell from their original righteousness and communion with God and so became dead in sin and wholly defiled in all the parts and faculties of the soul and body. That it's saying is something has changed in man and in the world. But remember, Adam is a giant uh, and uh, if he falls, we all fall. And so what happened in Genesis 3, it happens to us. And, and so look at Article 3 on the next page, on page 20. They, that's Adam and Eve, being the root of all mankind, the source of all mankind, the guilt of this sin was imputed, that, that just means flows down, and the same death in sin and corrupted nature convey to all their posterity, all their children, descending from them by ordinary birth, ordinary generation. So Adam is like a polluted source of a river, and from him flows down throughout all the generations, down to us, even today, flows down to us, sin and death. And so we need the covenant of works to explain both Genesis 3 and the whole world around us today. Why didn't the sin just end with Adam? Well, he was the covenant head, and he's a giant, and he's affecting the world. Why did just eating a bit of fruit plunge the whole world into sin and misery? Well, because this was the condition of the covenant of works. Uh, and so it wasn't just a little bite. It was rebellion that deserved death. And so uh, when Paul in Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, it's because when we sin, we're breaking the covenant of works and death is the curse from that. Death is the consequence of sin. And so the breaking of the covenant of works, it's also why judgment is coming when Christ returns. It's because of this that the curse follows from breaking the covenants. 
the covenant works says why there's evil in the world. In Adam, sin was passed down to all humanity. But I want us to think for the rest of the time, what do we mean by sin was passed down? Uh, so, so look what it says in Article 3 about sin. It says, the guilt of sin flowed down and the death that comes with that. So guilt, but also a corrupted nature. And here is how we can understand sin. Sin is guilt and sin is corruption inside of us. Uh, and th these two things were passed down. And we're going to finish by looking at that, but, but are there any questions at this point? Yes, finish up. Yeah. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, so, it, uh, so I said this last week. So, we're, it's not a magical tree that that uh, instantly like has sin in it and it kind of like puffs out. No, yeah, this is about obedience. So, it wasn't anything in the actual tree. It was it was a matter of obeying God. So, so it's not the tree in itself that would send them to, to or not eating of the tree that would send them to glory. But it was the obedience. It was the work of obedience within the covenant that would send them to glory, or the disobedience that did actually send them to death. Uh, so your other question, would they have ha eventually had access if, let's say, you got to glory? Hard to say. Uh, I want to say no. Um, th that law would have, would have stuck. Um, but he would have reached a point where he wouldn't have even wanted to anymore. Um, yeah. yeah. Any more questions? We'll keep moving. So, I want us to look now at what we mean by sin. So, so look again at Westminster Confession of Faith, uh, 6, uh, Article 3. So, did you see that distinction there? I think I've underlined it for you on your sheets. Uh, they being the root of all mankind, the guilt of this sin, this sin in the garden, was imputed, flow down, and the same death in sin, and also a corrupted nature came from them, conveyed to all their, their future generations. And so... Do you remember this diagram from last week? Here's one I made earlier. Oh. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. There we go. There we go. So do you remember this from last week? There's Adam as a covenant head. God makes a covenant and he represents all humanity. Uh, whatever happens to Adam flows down. Uh, and so uh, sin, we know sin flowed down, but, but we can understand sin in two ways. Sin, so sin flowed down. But what do we mean by that? We mean guilt flowed down uh, and corruption. I'm going to order some new paint this week. So we can see that. So guilt and corruption. So let's, let's first look at guilt. Uh, let's look at our memory verse, Romans 5.18. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. So in Adam's one trespass in the Garden of Eden was imputed, passed down onto all men. What was passed down? Condemnation, Adam says. That that's guilt, uh, which is all legal language, isn't it? Guilt you hear in courts, don't you? So he's talking about a legal label that, that God has stamped on humanity. So just like a, a judge says to a criminal in court, says... There's a law, you've broken that law, and now, in the eyes uh, of the judge, you are guilty, condemned. Uh, well, that's just like Adam. Adam broke God's law, you shall not eat. He disobeyed God, and so Adam is guilty. He's got the big stamp of guilty labeled on him. And that's just like us. When we sin every day, we have God's law in front of us, summed up in the Ten Commandments. And we constantly break that law. And so what does that naturally deserve? A stamp of guilt in God's eyes. Uh, but actually, so, so, so sin is guilt, it's breaking God's law. But actually, that's not the whole story that's going on here. Because even before Adam had any children, even before any of us were born, the whole human 
race is already guilty. Which may sound a bit odd, and I know you might have questions about this, but we need to understand that we all sinned in Adam. So look at Romans 5.12 again. I've got it written down for you. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And now it's this last phrase that I want us to think about, because all sinned. Uh, the way this is translated, it doesn't quite capture what it means. Paul isn't saying here, death spread to, uh, death spread to all men because eventually all men were born and eventually sinned at some point. No, the, the way this sentence works, it's saying that uh, uh, the time that all sinned was the same time that Adam sinned. The two times are the same. So Romans 5.12 is saying, all men sinned, all humans sinned, when Adam sinned in Eden. We sinned in Adam. Now you may ask, well, I wasn't there, so how could I have sinned? Well, yes, we weren't physically there uh, uh, in the garden, but actually... What Paul is saying here, we were present, every one of us, we were present, we were there attached to Adam's belt. And so remember, whatever happens to Adam happens to us, so when Adam disobeyed, we all disobeyed with him. Uh, Someone uh, once put it like this, when Adam ate the fruit, we all cheered. Uh, And that really sums up what Paul is saying here. It's not that Adam did something, but we weren't really involved, but you know, the guilt has to come down to us because then the rules. No, we're more involved in that. We sinned in Adam's, so we're all guilty. Every one of us here cheered on that day in the garden. We're all guilty. And so what is passed to humanity instantly in that moment? Guilt. The big stamp of guilt is on the world. And so uh, this is the first way you can understand sin. Sin is guilt. Uh, I'm going to pause for questions there. Are there any questions? Yeah, go on, Zuko. Um, so th- th- there are a few ways you can convey it. Uh, for, the first thing I think we just need to acknowledge is that we are very, very individualistic in this society, and that hasn't been the way for, for most of human history. Um, but yeah, w- we think I'm, I'm my own little bubble, um, so, so we need to first acknowledge that. Um, but uh, what the norm has been actually throughout history is we're usually represented by a king or a ruler, um, and well, we even see it today. When, when a king or a leader goes to war, the whole country goes to war with them, don't they? Um, uh, you see that in Ukraine. Like, people aren't being like, well, this isn't my war. No, they say, no this is my war. I'm, I'm jumping in. Like, I'm taking up arms with him. And so that is like us with Adam. Adam went to war with God, and we all took up arms with him. Um, Another thing to say is uh, we're all affected by our parents, our fathers in some way. Um, So imagine a criminal um, is before a judge and he's committed a murder. And we find out that his father was a murderer as well and and influenced his son. uh, And there was impact from that. We we wouldn't say, um, oh, it was it was all because of his dad, really. Uh, Like the murder his son committed, like. That, that's not really on him. No, we'd say, no, his father sinned and he sinned. Like, they're both guilty. Um, uh, so, so that's another way of thinking it. But I also say, like, if we look in our hearts now, if we could time travel back to Eden um, and we would be there and, and could just watch from the side as Adam was reaching out for the fruit, um, we would have all, all of us here, we would all somewhere in our heart being, be saying, yeah, go on, Adam, take it. So it's not like we're 
we wouldn't have done it ourselves. Like, we're all implicated even now, even if we could go back in time. Um, I don't know if that's answering. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, in, yeah. Uh, in some ways, you could, there is an element of truth there. Like, th this is God's design. This is how he, he rules the world. And if you, well, maybe I wouldn't say this to them directly, but yeah, if you think the world should be run another way, that, I mean, you're only heaping more, more condemnation on yourself. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, that, that's another answer. This is the way the world works. Um, yeah? Okay. Cool. Right. Any more questions on that? Yeah, Louisa. So, uh, we often talk about union with Christ and the Spirit and mm. together, but I can sort of understand some of these concepts very happily when I think about my union with Christ and the good works that Christ do happen to count for mm. me. really helpful yeah that's precisely it and you can see that in Romans 5 5 uh, uh, Paul is is creating this symmetrical comparison so so just like Christ is righteous and his righteousness flows down to us so Adam in the same way uh, represents uh, people is in union just like Christ in union with us Adam is in union with humanity and guilt flows down from that so yeah we're very happy to to be like yeah that, that that's a good way to work for when Christ gives us the benefits Oh, but I don't like it when, when it happens to Adam. Well, it, <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't have one but not the other. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's helpful, Louisa. Thank you. Um, any more questions? We might have to do at the end because uh, last thing to see is sin is corruption. So we've seen something has actually changed inside of us at the fall. We saw that in Genesis 3. Uh, Adam and Eve have in their hearts uh, th this desire to rebel against God. Um, and so that was passed down to us. Uh, the river flowed down to us from the source. Uh, and so uh, that is to say, Adam had a corrupted nature, and that corrupted nature flowed down to us. Uh, now, a human nature is ju it's just everything about us. It's our bodies, our desires, our hearts, our minds, uh, our instincts, everything. Uh, that's the human nature. And corrupted just means rotten, spoiled, uh, poisoned. Uh, and so... Uh, our, very, uh, our very beings, down to the very core, have been corrupted with sin. And to see that, uh, we just need to look at Adam's future generations that come from it. So uh, just look at Genesis 6, verse 5. Uh, I've got it printed out for you. Uh, this is just a few years on from the fall. So we're just looking at Adam's posterity, his, his children. And here, uh, God looks at Adam's posterity, all of humanity, uh, and this is the conclusion... The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So just look what it's saying here. In our hearts, the very center of our desires, the, the control room of our beings, in our hearts, every intention, every desire, what we naturally want, it's only evil all the time. So down into the core of our very being, we have become sinners. So it's not just that we do, do sinful things, it's that we are sinners. Uh, and that's what's been passed down to Adam. Uh, we now, we want to sin. Uh, and this is really important to understand, uh, because in the fourth century, uh, there, was a f uh, there was false teaching going around by a guy called Pelagius. And you can remember Pelagius, uh, he's a bad guy. And you can remember that because Pelagius sounds like a bad guy, doesn't it? It sounds like a villain from the film. Pelagius. Um, and Pelagius said this. He was uh, spreading this false teaching. He said, oh, we aren't sinful inside of us. Uh, no, we're basically good inside of us. Uh, we just happen to sometimes make mistakes uh, and do sinful things. And so, so Adam didn't pass down corruption to us inside of us. No. Adam, yeah, he was an example of bad sin. And so we follow that example, but we're basically good inside. 
Uh, but then a Christian called Augustine came along and said, whoa, Pelagius, no, 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 hold on. We are by nature children of wrath. Our hearts are deceitful and sick. And, and Christ came to change our hearts. Yes, he's come to deal with our guilt, but he's, he's come to actually change something inside of us. And that's why we need to be born again. That's why we need new natures. And so after that, Augustine, he's the hero. Always know that Augustine's the hero. Uh, Pelagius, uh, he ended up being condemned as a heretic. And so to understand sin as corruption, it's so important because we need to understand that there are feelings, our desires, what we naturally want, they are deeply, deeply unreliable because they're sinful. And this is really relevant today because the world thinks the complete opposite to this, don't they? And I want us to, oh, in 30 seconds, break out into groups and engage with this, uh, this situation here, knowing what you know about sin and the covenant of work. So I'll just read it out. Your friend says to you, why doesn't the church support LGBTQ plus community? We can't help the way we feel. It's simply natural to us. We need to be true to that. In fact, we were born this way. If God doesn't like the way we are, why did he make us the way we are? What a hateful thing not to affirm our identity. Uh, how would you respond to this in 30 seconds? Go. <laughs> Okay, let's try to, to wrap it up now. Uh, what, what did people think? Who, who has a uh, kind of a, in a nutshell summary of, of how we can apply what we've thought today to this situation? Go on, hands up. Uh, go on, Jono. Not try to answer in 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, asking a question like, um, what do you think the purpose of the church is? Mm -hmm. um, is and what, who do you think, yeah, what do you think the purpose of Jesus is? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think, I think then that guides the question towards what, yeah, the storyline of actually what, what is it? What mm -hmm. is yeah. But without it, just you talking, but asking. Mm -hmm. And then, because there's a, an underlying misunderstanding of mm -hmm. what the purpose of the church is. Yeah. Is yeah. So that, that, Th that, that'd be helpful. Yeah, through a question, you can actually begin to uh, unearth their assumptions, uh, one of which is, is about desire. Uh, our, the assumption is that our desires, that there's something to be followed. And that because it's natural, then it's good. But if it's natural to us, what's our nature? It, it's sinful. It's not something to follow. So the phrase, that there's a new book that's come out by Kevin DeYoung, Don't Be True to Yourself, that, that, sum, that sums up how to respond to sin. Do not listen to your heart. It's deceitful. Um, there's more to say that. I, I, I know it, it's not. there's also good in our hearts somewhere. That, that there's the spark of light, but we, we can discuss that later. And so, but, but maybe just, just have a think about this situation and how to apply the covenant works and sin to it. But let me just try to conclude with this. Uh, we've seen that sin is guilt and corruption. It's all passed down from the broken covenant of works. And this is how we can understand the world and our own hearts. And in all this, I hope you're starting to see that, that this is setting up the backdrop for the gospel. 
it's hard to understand salvation in Christ without this dark background highlighting it. It's creating a framework. There is now a need for another covenant, isn't there? With another representative to pass down not guilt and corruption, uh, but righteousness and new life. Uh, and we're going to see uh, next time that how God does that. And it's through the covenant of grace. Um, we're going to need to wrap up now. And oh, uh, before I pray, let me uh, say there's no Sunday school next week. Um, there's no church on in the morning next week. There's the Eating Half Marathon. So it's the 2 p.m. service and a 6 p.m. service. So no Sunday school. But we'll look at the covenant of grace in two weeks' time. Uh, but let me pray. Sorry for running over.